طيب so let's continue lecture 34 now we're going to talk about maximizing the desired product in parallel reactions maximizing the desired product in this section we discuss means of maximizing the desired product d through the selection of reactor type and conditions consider the following parallel reactions a goes to D, desired product, and A goes to U, and desired product. Both reactions could take place. The rate laws are therefore written as RD, okay, KD times CA to the power alpha 1, the power law model, thermom, and then RU would be KU times also CA to the power, but now alpha 2. The net rate of disappearance of A, obviously we're talking about minus R A, so it would be minus R A equals minus oops, minus R A through reaction one plus or let me just say minus plus minus R A through reaction two, and of course you know that minus R A one equals R D and minus R A2 equals R U. Therefore, we can write the net rate of disappearance this way. Right. We should examine ways to maximize the instantaneous selectivity. Correct? If you want to maximize the production of D, if you want to maximize the overall selectivity, you will need to find ways to maximize the instantaneous selectivity. So let's do that. Come on, let's examine ways to maximize the instantaneous selectivity for different reactions. Okay, different reactions means different orders and different activation energy for different reactions. The instantaneous selectivity, which is to be maximized as D over U, would be obviously RD over RU. And we know the rate loss, so we wrote the ratio this way. Type. The sensitivity of the instantaneous selectivity to temperature can be determined from the ratio of reaction constants, correct? Because K is our function of temperature. So if you want to see how the selectivity is affected by temperature, you should first look at the ratio KD over KU and see how they are affected by temperature. Therefore, we write KD over KU and we use Arrhenius equation, right? Remember already that, let's say KD. KD equals AD e to the power minus ED over RT. So when we divide KD over KU, we get this ratio and then we have E to the power minus ED minus EU over RT. And then let's take it four cases. Let's start with case one. In case one here, alpha one is greater than alpha two. So that means the order of the rea first reaction, desired reaction, is more than the order of the undesired reaction. In this case, if you look at alpha 1 minus alpha 2, if you look at this, come on, you'll find that this will be a positive number, right? It will be a positive number. So KD, the selectivity equals KD over KU times CA to the power A, where A is a positive number. Now you tell me, how can we increase the instantaneous selectivity? Okay. By looking at this equation. Well, you can say that I can increase the selectivity by maintaining a high concentration of A. That's correct. That's very correct. So how do you maintain high concentration of A? Well, if I'm using liquid phase reaction, right, then I'll use no diluent. So I try to use pure A. However, if you're using gas phase reaction, you will use the 
feed as also pure a eh? so without inerts and also you will increase the pressure because increasing the pressure will increase the concentration of a gas right what about reactors which reactors help you to maintain high concentration as much as possible well obviously it's not the ccr because ccr operates at the exit concentration right which is a low concentration so you operate using batch reactor or plug flow reactor in which both initially the concentration is high and then reduces with time in a batch or reduces with a distance down the length of the reactor for plug flow reactor well, however this concentration is high unlike ccr so i avoid using ccr type is k take case two where alpha two is greater than alpha one in this case you have the, the selectivity instantaneous selectivity is written as rd over ru which equals kd over ku and divided by ca to the power b where b is a, also a positive number so what do you recommend yes you are absolutely right we oper recommend operating at low ca meaning if you're using gas you use inert right or you operate at low pressure if you're using liquid then you use diluent what about reactors exactly you use ccr and you can also use recycle reactors because if you use recycle reactors so mom so the fresh feed the fresh feed here is diluted with the recycle stream okay and this will help me to maintain low ca okay case three let's look now at the activation energy the activation energy of the first reactor the uh, first reaction which is a desired reaction is more than the activation energy of the second reaction which is the undesired reaction so using Arrhenius equation again come on and looking at these ratios so you have now ad over au divided by e to the power a over t where a is a positive number in other words ed minus eu is a positive number but you have a negative here therefore it goes to the denominator so now how can you increase the ratio of kd over ku well in order to increase this ratio let's see shall we operate at high temperature hmm well if you operate at high temperature so if this is high then this ratio will be low therefore this number will be low and therefore since this isn't the denominator this whole number will be high come on excellent so you will operate at reasonably high temperature so operating at high temperature would help you to get higher instantaneous selectivity but why high temperature helps you to achieve high instantaneous selectivity any idea well we're talking about activation energies right we're talking about ed and eu okay remember shabab this slide from chapter three we said the larger the activation energy the more temperature sensitive is the rate of reaction so in our case ed for the rea desired reaction the activation energy is high so the rate of the reaction for the desired reaction is more sensitive than the rate of the undesired reaction i know that if i i increase the temperature both rates will increase right kd will increase and also ku will increase with the increase in temperature but which one will increase more kd will increase more than what ku will increase with because 
the rate of the reaction with a higher activation energy is more sensitive to temperature. Why is that? Well, we go back to the fundamentals. Remember, Shabab? We, we talked about the distribution of energy. Tamam? So, explaining the distribution of the energy of the molecules. We said where FET, where FET is the energy distribution function for the kinetic energies of the reacting molecules at different temperatures. So, this is the energy distribution for the reaction mixture 300 Kelvin. Tamam? This is the energy distribution at temperature of 310K. Okay, so what do you notice? What do you notice? Well, we notice the following. F, the activation energy, was 35 degree, sorry, 35 kilocalorie. Then, an increase in temperature by 10 degree Kelvin will increase the percentage of the molecules which have energies enough to go over the activation energy. Let's say, let's say, well, uh, this portion, come on, this represents that portion of the molecules we have, which have energy higher than the activation energy, right? Come on, if I increase the temperature by Let's say this portion is 5%. Okay, if I increase the 5% out of the whole energy distribution. Come on, out of the whole energy distribution. Okay, if I increase the temperature to 310, the portion, of course, of the molecules which have energy above the activation energy is now much larger, right? It could be, for example, let's say, uh, I would say 15% maybe. Come on. So you have increased the portion of the molecules who have enough energy to go through the reaction by three times. However, if the activation energy was only 10 kilocalorie, this was your activation energy. Come on. This was the activation energy. Okay, Tamam, or we can take even five if you want. Okay, that might be even easier to notice. Okay, so let's take activation energy of five. Okay, here the portion of the molecules who have energy which are lower than five is very small, but the portion of the molecules who have energy okay so let's start with 300 kelvin okay i guess we start with 300 kelvin well 300 kelvin this is the portion of the molecules which do not have does not have enough energy so let's say this is maybe five percent so the rest will be 95 percent of the molecules have energy which is above the activation energy now let's go to temperature of 310 you can see that for 310, so we're looking at this energy distribution, only a very small portion of the molecules do not have. So that means the majority, they have energy above the activation energy. So let's say 99%. So I only increased the portion by maybe what? 3%, something like that. Okay, so it's really... The increase was really negligible, correct? In fact, it's 1.04, so that means I have increased it by 4% only. So, the reaction which has an activation energy, of a very high activation energy, in this case, we say let's consider this case 35 kilocalorie, and this is for the desired reaction you have you have actually a lot of molecules a lot of molecules don't have enough energy to go through the reaction 
right? If I increase, if I increase the temperature, this portion of the molecules which do not have enough energy will be less. Okay, so I affected it in a noticeable way. In other words, if you look at it from the point of view of the molecules that have enough energy. At low temperature, the portion of the molecules who have enough energy was very low. And any increase in temperature will help to increase this portion by a lot. But if the activation energy was low, which in this case was for the undesired reaction, we already have a lot of the molecules have enough energy to go through the reaction. So an increase in temperature would only increase this portion by little bit. So who was the reaction which is more sensitive to the temperature's increase is the reaction with the higher activation energy. Okay. So that's with regard to the conditions. So we choose reasonably high temperature. Of course, we don't go very high temperature because this could create even more side reactions, more undesired reactions, which for will, for will end up with more undesired products. So we don't do this. That's why we're saying reasonably high temperature. So mom, and of course, also, if you go to very, very high temperature, you need better material of construction. So what about reactors? What about the type of the reactors? Well, if you need high temperature, that means you need to use heated reactors or heated feed. So you mean, that means you need to heat your feed. What if the activation energy of the undesired reaction was higher than the activation energy for the desired reaction? Now, who's more sensitive? Well, obviously, the Ku is more sensitive to the increase in temperature than Kd. Well, both will increase Kd and Ku and Kd will increase by an increase in temperature, but who will increase more? Ku will increase more. So is it for your benefit to increase the temperature? Obviously not. It's better to maintain low temperature, but not very low because if you choose a very low temperature, the rate of the reaction will be very low and you will not achieve any appreciable conversion. Come on. So in this case, we will use reasonably low temperature and we're going to use cooled reactors, right? or cooled feed. You're going to introduce the feed at lower temperatures if possible. Okay, so let's have one more example. Let's consider the following two simultaneous reactions. A plus B gives you D and while A plus B could also give you U and this is the instantaneous selectivity. And now, Shabab, Shabab, the selectivity parameters has to be maximized again. I need to maximize is du. Okay, following are various reactor schemes and conditions that might be useful to maximize SD over U. So, which of these reaction reactors you will use at which conditions? Taban, the reactor selection criteria should start with the safety, correct? So, which reactor you're going to choose as first would be the safest reactor for that application. So first you look at the safety aspect and then you look at the selectivity, which scheme will give you higher selectivity. And then you look at yield. Then you look at the temperature control. Come on. And this could be actually a very large concern that you should look at it and the safety. And then finally you look at the Coast. These are the criteria that you use for reactor selection. So let's look at the CCR. When you will choose a CCR? Well, obviously you choose a CCR if you want to, if the instantaneous selectivity would be high if the concentration of A and B are low, right? What about the tubular reactor? Well, I'll use tubular reactor if I want to maintain the concentration of A and B high. Batch 
same thing if I want to maintain the concentration of A and B high because this will leave, give me higher instantaneous selectivity. What about the semi batch where it is initially charged with A and slowly fed with B? Well, this setup is used if you want to maintain, if you want to maintain a high concentration of A but you want to have a low concentration of B. And this setup is the opposite. What about this setup? Well, you have instead of feeding all the B at the entrance, you will add B throughout the reactor. So again, if you want to add B, well, if you're going to add A at 100 mole per second, and B also added at 100 mole per second, but in this case, you will add the 100 mol per second throughout. You distribute throughout the reactor. So this will make sure that you will maintain a low concentration of B throughout the reactor and high concentration of A, especially at the beginning. So if you want high concentration of A and low concentration of B, then you use this setup, which is a membrane reactor or a tubular reactor with side streams. And this is the opposite. But what about these configurations? Well, obviously, I want to maintain low concentration of A, right? But even lower concentration of B. And this, of course, ratio could change. Again, for the last one, you could obtain, you have low concentration of A, actually very low concentration of A, and maybe reasonable low concentration of B. Okay. Uh, tubular reactor with a cycle, we just said, well, if you're going to use a cycle, that means you want to, to maintain low concentration of A and B, and this recycle will also help you to control the temperature. What about the CCR with a cycle? Obviously, this will give you even lower concentration of A and B, and would also help you to better control the temperature, whether high or low, depending on the exit temperature of the reactor. What of the membrane reactor where C is removed from the reactor? Well, this will help you to minimize any side reaction if C was very reactive, correct? This will also help you to shift the equilibrium forward if you had, if you had reversible reaction. If you have reversible reaction, then pulling C out will shift the equilibrium forward. The same thing with the setup, reactive distillation. Tamam, except that now you have low concentration of A and B, and you want to maintain low concentration of C throughout the reaction because maybe C is very reactive and could cause side reactions, or because that we have, uh, uh, for example, reversible reaction. Type. So with this we finished, we reached to the end of lecture 34 and we'll meet soon in the following lecture. Have a good day.